And now, prepare your ear holes for penetration as we bring you another great podcast from the Poop Culture Extended Universe. Before we get to the podcast, I want to let you know about our new sponsor, Studio. Studio wants to revolutionize the way people see headphones by bridging the gap between fashionable headphones without quality sound and high-tech headphones that are bulky and not design-oriented to bring you their line of headphones. They sent me a pair of their Regent Style Bluetooth wireless headphones to try out, and I gotta tell you, they're literally rocking my world. I've been prancing all over the place without worry of snagging any wires, jamming to my playlist while washing dishes, shopping for groceries, and even attempting to lift weights. They even passed my heavy metal headbanging test, and that's thanks all to the comfort, style, and quality sound these headphones provide. The Regent Bluetooth wireless headphones are Studio's premium model with impeccable clarity in the instrumental tones and well-balanced sound. It can connect to any device that offers Bluetooth but also has an auxiliary cord if you don't want to use the wireless option. Also, with the 24 hour plus active battery life and 20 days of standby life, the Regent is perfect for you at home and on the go. And lastly, you can personalize your Regent interchangeable caps such as white or black marble designs with many other designs to customize your Regent headphones. So. Go to the website at studio.com and use the promo code rewind for 15% off. That's one five, 15% off your purchase of these quality sound and fashionable headphones. And now to the show. Hey dudes and dudettes, thanks for tuning into this episode of the Be Kind and Rewind podcast. A podcast chock full of everything that is nostalgic about the 80s, 90s, and more, where we chat with our favorite celebrities about our nostalgic VHS days. This episode, we're forming the Flying V to answer listener and fan questions from my guest, who is best known for his role in the Mighty Ducks franchise as Les Averman, as well as many other roles while playing his tunes with his silky smooth voice. So, I welcome back Matt Doherty to the podcast. Hey Carlos, good to have, uh, good to be here on the, the World Wide Webbage. It's awesome, man. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for coming back. Uh, uh, again, t- thanks for taking the time. Like I was just telling you, ton of listeners were super excited when I put out that you and I were going to be. Sp- you, you actually weigh, you I, weigh, I your weigh them. I told them to physically put themselves on the scale, throw me the numbers, and we're, we're going to use that as our reference. So you cut you cut down the little ones, or the yeah, I got you. So you want to have a nice weight differential per fan. Of co- yeah, of course, man. Yeah, it's all about yeah. balance. If you yeah. watch the recent Karate Kid series, it's all about balance. So yeah, it's, it's like I said, a ton of them were just reaching out there, uh, came out of the woodwork, honestly. And so they're just throwing out their questions. So we got them that they provided. They want to hear some of these questions that, or some of these answers uh, from the questions they provided. But um, just real quick, just to catch up with you, since the last time we spoke, it's been about a year or so. So like you know. What have you been up to? You've been, um, you know, I know you've been playing, uh, uh, you're, you've had some music, you've been playing any shows or anything else? So it's been a year. That means we've, we've rotated around the sun. We have a, a full rotation. And I, and I had no uh, uh, cognitive knowledge of that. That's 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 quite incredible. Uh, yeah, I've just been, um, you know, doing what we do out here in Hollywood land, which is, uh, uh, you know, I, I mostly just write, and uh, so I occasionally come out of my writing hole, <laughs> and then like, and then wave what I've written around, and and like, you know, it's kind of like breadcrumbs, and then somebody picks it up and goes, "Hey, I like this," and sometimes they, you know, they don't, and that's that's generally what I've been doing. I mean, if it works, it works. So, what yeah. do you have anything in particular that you're excited about that you kind of well, the for Russians, pickup? the Russians might be listening, and Uh-oh. they've already, and that's actually the main reason why I haven't. Uh, why I can't do the Skype thing is actually I think my Skype account has been hacked. Uh oh. So yeah, we yeah, can't we have can't the, be having the bots. Yeah, no, no, I don't want to have like the Russian Russian spam bots. Understandable. Less, there's only one less Averman, you know. Exactly. Um, totally understandable. Yeah, so I, no. Uh, yeah, just no. I've been writing uh, a, a lot of assignments and um and um and then some stuff for myself and and uh, yeah, so that's pretty much. But I, I can't really talk about too much because they always tie you up with uh, paperwork. So I mean. I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you, and I'm not very big, and I'd probably lose that. I mean, I'm not either, so no one would know if I was gone. Yeah. So we. Oh yeah, <laughs> you got you got that like towering disposition when you did the introduction. I thought maybe you were a big dude. You know, it's it's all you know bravado. It's all relative. <laughs> it's all relative and bravado. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. No, I mean that's awesome. It's understandable. That's a good tease, honestly. You know, let, let's let everybody listening know that there are things in the works, but we can't talk about it right now. But in the future, we may hear about something. So that's awesome. 
Yeah. Oh, I, oh, wait a second. I'm my God. I'm so awful. I was. I'm supposed to like probably say that I that I've been recording a record too. But I'm. I'm like. Oh God. I'm awful. I don't even. I'm. I'm like an awful promoter. I should find a way to <laughs> hire a promoter like like one of those circus guys, and then he could like go, "Hey, Matt, you should say that." Uh, no, he I, needs I, a twirly do, mustache yeah, and the barker. I, exactly, yeah. man. Like with the big sign and the like uh, bullhorn thing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, which wouldn't really play on the internet, I think. But uh, yeah, no, I've been also hard at work on a record for the last year, which it always takes longer than you think it did. So anybody who's got a a project they're working on, and you know, there's an old saying: you can't have a. It's just not always going to take longer than you think it will. So don't give up on it and keep at it. So that's kind of what I've been doing. Well, awesome. Well, we'll definitely be uh, stay tuned for that one as well. So some upcoming things for me. We'll get into all that stuff a little bit later. But uh, talking about some of the questions, or a lot of the questions we got, I got a little bit more of the feel of the uh, the pulse of all the fans and listeners by putting out some polls on Twitter and Instagram. Um, just some standard polls just to see what everyone thought about, you know, just the overall feel of the Mighty Ducks franchise. So the uh, first one I went on... Uh, um, Twitter we put the which was your favorite part of the Mighty Ducks franchise and I listed the Mighty Ducks movies the Flying V the Anaheim Ducks them or the Mighty Ducks animated series so which one do you think people maybe had the, the mm. most feels for I would no, so no, you you actually group the movies together as one whole or did you separate yes yeah, so these are these are going to be different like just different aspects or uh, of the Mighty Ducks franchise so I'm we had the say, movies yeah I'm gonna I got I, I hope I hope we. I hope the film that launched it all would be the number one. I mean, of course, and you're right. It's a, a overwhelming. Seventy-four percent were the Mighty Ducks movies was the favorite part of the franchises. Um, were you a fan at all of the duck? The I would Anaheim say ducks? probably the, the hockey team. After that. I'm sorry, I think the hockey team would be after that. Yeah. Oh yeah, I actually was just at an Anaheim Duck game uh, right before the end of the uh, regular season. They're amping up to, um, um, to this would be their 25th anniversary as a franchise, and uh, and we had a great visit about um, just like what we learned in, in, is that like in the early days of hockey, it was like this ugly sport. People were beating up on each other. It'd be like this veil of cigarette smoke. But then Disney got involved, and like it became like a, a place where people could bring their families and kids, and it really changed the game. So like it reminded me of like wow, the, like the kinship with the team and. And that's 25 years, and I'm like, holy wow! Like I, yeah, I was like, sneaking I helped, up on you. Uh, played a small, like infinitely small part in, in like this team, uh, and in like inspiring a big shift in the sport itself, and getting, and, and that like, oh yeah, you, know, you think you're just, you're just this kid, and I'm like, I'm just doing this movie, and what? I'm leaving Chicago and doing, it. And like, and then you look back, and you're like, wow, this was a big. Not only a big event, but it changed the sport. It changed the sport and influenced a ton of kids to get into playing hockey. Exactly. Like, I mean, I was exactly. on the rollerblades. I w- we didn't have an ice rink in my small town, but I was definitely on the rollerblades after watching D two on multiple on, on loop, basically. So yeah, definitely, you're right. You guys, uh, it had more of an impact than you guys knew at the time. But as uh, as time went on, you got to see it, especially through Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. See how uh, the impact of the uh, um, the movie franchise itself and the animated series. Did you watch that too as a, as a kid at all, or is that something like like it's it's cool, but uh, you know, it was kind of it kind of just had its own little thing. Uh, I did uh, a little bit, but like. That was like when I finished the movies, um, I was going right into college. So then, you know, uh, yeah, and I was, I was like, you're probably a little bit older yeah, at that point. So, so like, when, it was when doing we its got own through thing. Ducks three, I mean, I just went and had a pile of homework and a, you know, I didn't really, yeah, I mean, <laughs> and then like you kind of <laughs> wake up ten years later and go, yeah, what was this? Oh, yeah, there was a. Thing. Oh, there was a show. There was this. Yeah. There was that. Yeah, no, I, definitely understandable. You you went on and did your own thing. Um, because, I mean, you guys, it, it was the, it, the show was just like, it was a completely different thing. It was just using a name, basically, um, which was cool. I, I remember watching it on Saturday mornings and stuff like that. Of course, kept the name alive, at least for the Ducks al- name alive for a while, uh, especially with the uh, the professional team. I remember having their gear. Uh, the uh, And then going into our other uh, polls, which uh, the Instagram polls, which I did, which was better, you know, among the uh, fans was D1, D2, or D3. We had D two. Yep. Sixty two percent. I would D2. say D two. Yeah. 
Yeah. And of course, like you said, 25 year anniversary next year. So I'm sure hopefully some things are in the works. That would be awesome. Maybe a, a super like Blu-ray release or something yeah, like that. Well, I've, I've had the honor of, uh, of learning that on, you know, uh, going to different places and meeting people and signing things. And that it seems like when I ask, I'm like, hey, what's the, what's your favorite? Because I'm really I'm really curious. And, and a mm-hmm. lot of people say, too. And I was like. And then I ask why. So, yeah, it feels like that has the perfect balance of one and three. It really does. I mean, most times people, the sequel is not as good as the first. And I say this is one of the few occasions where it surpasses the first for me. Like, I've, I I enjoyed the first one. It got me into Mighty Ducks. But the second one just, like, locked me in. I mean, come on. We we beat, we beat Iceland. You did. (laughs) You you took out an entire country. In the junior, in the junior Goodwill games. You took out Dracula from Monster Squad. Yeah. You took down Dracula from Monster Squad. So, That's right. you know, yeah. that that in itself was for me. I was like, yes, two times, took it down. And, and the jersey, the unveiling of the new jerseys, and that was the, the next one was, which was the favorite jersey, the old school jersey or the new jersey. We had the new jersey at 80%. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's just, as soon as I saw that in the movie, yeah, I was I like, got gotta, the have whole, it. gotta have it. Um, I remember when they were sketching out what that jersey would look like. Uh, and, uh, well, we were in hockey camp for ducks too. uh, Jordan Kerner. Um, we were just talking about this when we were at the game that he used to keep, we were looking at the early, early sketches of what that Jersey would look like. And they were trying to figure it out. And I was like, and when you first saw it, I think it has skull and crossbones, but it was the duck symbol. And then it was like a, like mm-hmm. a pirate and then it became that. And, but man, I mean, that thing is still, it's so, it's so iconic, you know? I did a little mashup on the, uh, I got a, uh, a T Public t-shirt uh, store where you can put up all your designs and I put a, uh, a like a, a bloodied um, Muddy Ducks mask on top of a, an animated Jason Voorhees with his machete walking around. So oh yeah. That's, that I feel that's a good mashup. That's a, could be, that could be a good mashup potentially. So yeah, but that design itself, it's just so eye-catching. I just love oh, it. Yeah, it was such yeah. a great update to the original. I mean, I love the original, uh, the original, um, graphic and everything, but man, that one was just so like, just, it just, just caught my eye yeah. and I, it caught a lot of people's eye and it, it, it was definitely a popular one, especially even going now to hockey games. Like I live here in Denver going to the avalanche games. Every time you walk in and I see a, a, a huge mixture of uh, the, the green jerseys and then the updated white jerseys. And it's just fun to see those the people my like, you know, 30 years old and their kids having those oh, jerseys yeah, now. Sure. So that's, that's definitely cool things. And the last poll we did was, uh, which was the better goalie. But Julie the Cat, well, Goldberg, Julie the Cat had 89% overwhelming. Jay. People were uh, in yeah, favor. Yeah, I mean, I agree with her flat-out <laughs> skill level. But, like, see, what I think Sean or Goldberg had, or, or the original name was a Took, by the way. Goldberg was originally intended to be a, um Alaskan native named the Took. So we would all – Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, which was really funny. So then we changed it to Goldberg or Steve Bill did, right? But we used to call Sean a Took, but – he had the ability, like any good athlete, to like Muhammad Ali, to get in people's heads. You know, he knew how to, which is like, you know, you know, maybe he didn't he have the, the glove. Down. Yeah, maybe he didn't have the glove that Julie the Cat had, or the stick speed, or you know, he left the five all open. But he, he had the sense of uh, of uh, getting in his player other teams' heads and uh, making some psychological. Uh, yeah, know, he had the charisma. The mind, you know, you know, when you mess with the, you know, when catchers talk to the batter right before they hit. You know what I mean? It's like uh, he just had the ability to get in there. No, you're you're totally right. So they had they did have these uh, similar but opposite sort of uh, talents that could be utilized. So I think people are, you know, they're not giving Goldberg the uh, credit yeah. he deserves, but probably from just from sheer athletic oh, prowess yeah, and gotta, like you got to give the jewel, you got to give the cat at the time. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, we we can definitely share love for sure, but we can see why people prefer Julie. So those are the uh, Twitter polls, just to kind of get a pulse on everyone's feelings so far. But now we're just going to get right into the uh, fan and listener well, questions. Well, if Goldberg hadn't worked at the deli on the off season, it might have turned out. But that uh, it didn't. Yeah. It didn't help his yeah. family owned a deli, yeah. so he basically had you know full reign on the uh, on the uh, on the on the. Slice and maybe meats. that fear that they, he was always going to move back to Philly just really. Uh, that's true. You know, Didn't he mention that? Was that in the first movie? Yeah, that was the first movie? Like, yeah I'm about to move to the, Philly. The I don't instability know. At, a, at a young, ripe age. <laughs> just, you know, no, you're right. Just the hand eye coordination, you know, it just was affected by that. So. Well, he, he utilized that against Julie in the third movie when he gave her, he tried to overfeed her with all but that But I food, guarantee so. you that, you know, Julie Cat, 
uh, Kalam Jacobson could outcook Sean Weiss because she's an amazing chef, uh, and she actually is a chef. And uh, uh, but Sean Goldberg could probably outplay the harmonica. He's like John Popper good. So well, then it's gonna ha- you got to have one of those um, just a, you know uh, if, that, if, that, if, there's a, if there's a metric for that you know like metrics in baseball then then that would help out. They need to have like a top chef while yeah. she's cooking something and Sean's playing harmonica yeah. and they get to be measured in those things. But yeah, well, what is she, what is she uh, where is she a uh, chef at? Uh, I think somewhere in New York City. I'm not sure. You wouldn't, you'd have to talk to one of the other guys or gals in our yeah. team, but I know that, that she's a chef and oh, had like nice. a cookbook or all kinds of stuff. Yeah. She's a, amongst other things. She's like, our, well, good for her. She's like good iron chef. Well, yeah, like that—that's what I was going with reference. It has to be Iron Chef style. Get her uh, do some cooking and get uh, Sean doing some uh, some harmonica playing. So, so yeah. Well, uh, like I said, that was the uh, the uh, Twitter polls and Instagram polls. Now we're gonna get into the questions. The first one we got. Was uh, Jess at Skater under, underscore Girl Eleven asking, "Do you still have any of the jerseys you got for the movies?" Oh, uh, yeah. You know, I never. You know, it's funny. Um, the first ducks, which are the green one, I never, I never got one of those. The original green ones, the District Five ones. Mm-hmm. They were, uh, they were like under lock and key, man. I, I couldn't. I get mean, one I figured those were like actual District Five, yeah. like somebody's. And uh, <laughs> somebody but I have gotten jersey. off the internet. Like you can buy, uh, people will will make them, and you know I'm sure they're made in China somewhere. But I have one of those, which is great. Um, no, I, I've seen there's a couple. Yeah, uh, they're great. Online, I've, I've seen sack. them a lot. But I did get they did um they did give me I got the one from the second ducks, and I have a Team USA one as well. Um, and then the, uh, the good old I don't, did I have one? Did I have one from the third ducks? I'm not sure. Was it the Warriors? Is that yeah what the they, Warriors? Yeah, yeah. yeah the Warriors, yeah. Well, I mean that's that's a memorable one, but not as and that is the first like the first yeah. first I mean, one I, in the, the USA Ducks as well. The original like Ducks one from second the second movie is like is one of my most prized possessions. So I uh, I mean I it's iconic. <laughs> it ha- yeah, yeah, it's iconic, man. It has to be. I'm telling yeah. you, that's uh, that symbol. And, will, and I will actually just played on. in it. I mean, that was like the one I wore and skated in. So like you know, um, jerseys can get a little beat up. So it's cool. Well, there you go. Now, moving on to the next one, we have TFGIF Podcast. At TFGIF Podcast says, what's the weirdest reaction someone has had after recognizing you in a non-professional setting, that is, and how did you react back? Well, uh, reaction, I think it would be an allergic reaction. You know, like when people are (laughs) allergic to cats, they just sneeze. Like a sneeze. uh, I think they just sneezed a lot and they get like really puffy red eyes and like uh, you just try not to take that personally, so... (laughs) <laughs> I mean, it's under, I mean, that's that's the best reaction if you just want someone to just be like stunned and leave you alone, and, or just to be like, yeah, I don't know what just happened. Sneeze uh, on them. You know, I think the funniest thing would be when I actually ran in the Mike Vitar, um, and who was actually a duck, and um, I uh, I had I had a day job at the time, and okay, so you want to get real? We'll get real honest here. I'll tell you let's, the real. Let's do it. This is the real fun thing because yeah, not everything's all uh, bread and roses and, you know, all the time for this, you know, we just, everybody thinks that you just, it's all cake, right? Which it isn't. Uh, but I remember having a, a job at one point and, and it was one of these thankless jobs and, and I was giving change and I was just like Averman um, in Ducks 2 when he's giving tickets out, you know, in the beginning, you know, I wasn't <laughs> oh, working they, at a movie theater with a bow tie, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, where, you know, the quack attack is back, Jack, it wasn't any of that, but I, you know, I was doing a gig and, and I'm going to give the change and there's Mike with his, uh, with his family. We hadn't seen each other in years. And, uh, you know, Mike's a fireman. I think he's a fire captain now. And, and he had his kids in the back of his car and we both, I still remember we both looked at each other with this like art imitating life moment because I was like, here I am. <laughs> Giving change, <laughs> and uh, and then we both smiled, and then it was like, and we had this great moment. But to me, that it, it's just so surreal because it was he was literally, you know, we were good friends and grew up together and all that too. So, yeah, and then I mean, we and then we caught up, and then we caught up about family and all that. But that to me is my favorite moment. I mean, yeah, that's awesome. I mean, just of all people, you know, to run into him and you guys just, like you said, just trade that little laugh because both in the business, you know how things are. Things yeah, like that and then I happen. would say other than that, just playing hockey in high school um, and, and a little bit of club hockey after that. But 
Mostly, you just uh, you just get a little bit. Some people like one or two people from the other team would would see. No, it. no, 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 no. This was like when I was playing high school hockey. During oh, Ducks, okay. I'd get uh, it, it was really fun because people would uh, you know, I mean, it's in you know the south suburbs of Chicago, and we were playing, and everybody knew I was the kid from the movies, so everybody wanted to get a piece of me in the corners. So that oh, was yeah. kind of fun. That was kind of fun. <laughs> I mean, I bet you you had to step up your game. That's what really probably uh, got you on another level. Yeah, but we were a club. We were club level. I mean, we were we were good, but you know, we weren't playing at that like high high level. You know. And I bet you threw a few people off. They're just thinking they're going to be playing against actual Averman, and then all of a sudden, whoa, this guy's you know. He got... Well, that's that's because of Jack White. Jack White was our was our coach, and he trained us how to play, and he turned us all into pretty good players. Well, nice. So well, awesome. Well, uh, TFGIF, thanks for the uh, question on that one. Next one, we got Trantor at Trantor says, loved Emilio Estevez as Coach Bombay. Was he as fun off screen or did he oscillate himself from the cast? Oh, no, he never, um, he never, uh, uh um, no, man, he was, uh, he was amazing. Amazing. Um, I'm not sure if I told this story before when I was on it, but I mean, you know, at the time he was the, you know, the biggest star in Hollywood and he was married to Paul Abdul, who was like, you know, I think this is way back when, right? And we were like, oh my God, you know, this is like. Straight up now tell me Paulo Abdul situation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Straight, you know, uh, uh, with that, um, the opposites attract video. Oh, right? yeah, with the, with the cat dancing and, cat. Uh, we all knew about it. And I remember when she was on set, I used to just want to hang around the craft service table and eat bagels until I ran into her. Because <laughs> she was like my height, you know, and I was, you know, I was like, dang, you know. And that's the like, thing, as a kid, you're like, if they're the same height, they're totally going to be into me. That's the thing. <laughs> and I was like, I'd be like, oh, if I just hang around the craft service table, Paul Abdul will come around. But anyways, no, I, uh, uh, Emilio was like, you know, he was a huge star and, you know, you build up this thing in your mind before you meet people and, and, um, it's just natural. You know, I remember my dad used to say to me, um, you know, everybody puts their pants on one leg at a time and which is like a real Midwest is saying, you know, no matter who you're meeting up, down, high or low, we're all, we're all the same. And, um, Emilio had that kind of same thing and he still does. Um, he's just a gentleman, you know? And, but I remember that before we knew him, everybody, you know, you had this mythical image and then he had, uh, we were in hockey camp and we would go to school. This is before the movie would start. We would train hockey and then we would go to school. And then, and then you know, we did that for like four, four to five weeks. And, and we were like building to the day we were going to meet Emilio Estevez. And, um, and like uh, he had evidently bought out a go-kart slash like arcade slash like baseball um, batting cage place, you know, awesome. one of, you know what I mean? And yeah. like sprung us from school, set it all up with our studio teacher. So we could go longer to, we were going longer to school a couple days before. And like, we had no idea. And then like, we're at hockey camp, we get out, we all think we're going to school. He busts in, there's like a bus and we all go and play video games and go-karts and, and, and all that. And like, from that moment on, we were all like, oh, he's like one of us, you know, and he was having fun. And I think I remember he brought his kids with him. And but I might be making that up. That's a long, long time ago. And <laughs> so after that, it was like, that's it, you know. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he sounds like an awesome dude. Like you said, like he didn't separate himself as always, even as being a big of a star. His family, you know, he's like a legacy in Hollywood at this point, you know, uh, with his brother, Charlie, and his dad. Um, why can't I think of his dad? uh Martin, Martin, Martin yeah, Sheen, yeah, Martin Sheen, yeah. So I mean, he could have been. He has, a, he, he, has, has a, he has a big Hollywood family. You got Ramon, yeah, everybody, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I forgot about Ramon too. So, so yes, exactly. And uh, it's just sound. It's just awesome to sound to hear that he um, was as awesome as he was on screen and he was off screen. So, so yeah, Trantor, answer. Uh, hopefully that fulfills your uh, your question there. We have the next one is uh, IMDb Journey podcast at IMDb Journey. And their question is, uh, it's obviously hard to stay in touch with all your friends sometimes, especially from over 20 years ago. Our question is, are you super close with any of the cast? And if so, who? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pretty, I mean, Sean Weiss and I are, are great friends and I haven't seen him much lately. Uh, but, uh, we were, we, we were best friends for a long, long time and, uh, and did a lot of comedy together and all that. Um, Brandon uh, from Mighty Ducks one and two and I and Garrett and we see each other a lot. Marguerite uh, who played Connie, um, you know it, it, everybody really. I mean, I see Aaron Schwartz from the first Ducks and 
and um it's it's funny we were all just uh in boston area for like kind of a reunion and, a, and an appearance and and um and like we were laughing like it's like no time passes you know because these are we, we grew up together and we had this ridiculous experience together and now we're we're grown ass people and and I remember Brandon and, and Garrett and I were uh uh just had like this three, four hour lunch and and caught up about all you know, what it's like to just to have these experiences and and uh it was just I mean, yeah, these guys are they're like family. Even though we don't see each other very often, everybody's spread out and got lives and careers and you know, responsibilities and families. You know, it's just like anything else. Well, it's like you said, it's that, it's that connection you have, that unique experience of growing yeah. up, being, you know, a child actors and then growing up and having your own lives, but now being recognized for what you did 20 plus years yeah, ago. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a dirty schism on what a child actor is. And mm-hmm. so we, we have a, a unique perspective of that. And uh, like I remember Brandon was talking about when we last got together, he's like, man, he was like, laughing about these uh young people in hollywood who are now like blah 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 he's like man they grew up watching us we're og now exactly <laughs> and started, yeah and i'm like i guess we're og status for sure <laughs> you <know>? man you <laughs> guys have officially been uh, been deemed ogs yeah and your og status when you don't have to when nothing's too impressive and you're, you're just you're just level and you know we did we i couldn't stop laughing when he said that <laughs> No, that, and like you said, you guys just have that experience you can share with each other for the rest of your life. Um, now, like you said, with the recent, you know, the recent years with social media and you guys being recognized more, like people reaching out directly to you and just expressing their gratitude. I'm sure, like you said, you guys can share all those, all those experiences. Oh, so, yeah. yeah that keeps you well, we all closer up. than we anything. All grew up. We all grew up on these movies. I mean, everybody, I, I can't tell you how many times people have stopped me and said, hey, man, I grew up on these movies. And I'm like, well, so did I. I mean, would you guys have slumber parties and watch each other's movies? N- no, God okay. no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, were you, guys, were, you that, were you those kids watching each other's movies? As, as no, slumber no, parties? I, no, no. Mo- mostly just made fun of each other. That's all. Yeah. That's good. Well, you could, you could, you know, what you should do is do like the uh, mystery uh, science theater, but of your own movies and just, you know, make jabs at each other. That'd be, that'd be pretty awesome angle. Um, but yeah, no, that's, uh, that's awesome. You guys can uh, keep sharing those uh, experiences, like you said, for the rest of your life. So that's something that'll keep going on. So IMDB journey podcast. Thanks for that question. Uh, we got next one's crossover podcast at MP six. They say, if you have time, I recommend our Mighty Ducks 4 script, which heavily features Lesser Averman. I listened hey, to a little bit of this. somebody's got some good taste. Yeah, I listened to a little bit of this. They, uh, they definitely it heavily featured, so I'll send you the link so you can definitely take a take a peek at that. And, uh, and yeah, maybe so where, where Lester Averman takes over uh, uh, the world is that what it is? Lester Averman, is? I think, takes over Nakatomi Plaza. I think in the in their yeah. or is it or is it more <laughs> like the the Daryl Souter? Uh, coach uh who was retired up in canada and then has to get called into a stanley cup team that would be it you know i think you're uh, closer than you than you yeah, know he was like he was like a goat farmer or something right and then they, <laughs> yeah like, something like that they're like oh come come uh come coach the team there or coach there yeah yeah i'm telling you I, you give it a listen there's definitely uh some interesting some interesting takes but i think you might be happy with the outcome so yeah thanks for crossover podcast we'll we'll see if we can get that green lit See if we can see that on the next, uh, uh, on the theater near you. Uh, next question, we got Friends Fans at Friends Fan. And they said, I heard on the last podcast you play guitar. I love Twilight Rendezvous and 13 Bills, but it was a few years ago. Uh, do you have plans to release any more? We talked about that earlier. Uh, will you be play- Will you be touring anything as well? Yeah, I, uh, well, there's a record coming out called Dignity, and uh, that's, uh, really excited about and I, lauren adams is a really wonderful um producer uh she's been working on it with me uh and some of the finest musicians in the world and we got to raise a little kickstarter money and um and it's all homegrown um so i'm kind of like a hip-hop artist you know where like i'm no record i'm like no record label man i'm gonna do it all and put it on the thing yeah except except i'm like this like dorky dude who plays a banjo once in a while you, you, and, like I said, uh, you're the, the banjo chance the rapper. You can rock it. Yeah, you can, exactly. You can do it. That's it. The banjo chance the rapper. I like that. Uh, yeah, so that should be – it should be coming out soon, but, it you know, it takes time to mix the record. We've been done for a while, but, you know, it's just the, like, constantly 
moving things around and all that. Would and, you say uh, that's the hardest part? Like really like the final cut, fin- like getting it all mastered and making sure all, everything uh, sounds man, perfect. I, any, anytime you make anything that matters, it takes time. And um, I mean, when I, when I was teaching writing, I, I would say to anybody in this, in this industry, if you can do anything else, go do it. Um, and I looked them square in the eye and go, you know, cause this is a mean bare knuckle fight. And, mm-hmm. uh, but like any, it always takes a day longer than you possibly think you can stomach it. Anything of great worth, and uh, and the record is no different. Sure, you know you could say records, and they, you know there's like all the work. But you know when you're trying to, um, you know, just manage anything. Like I think if you're working, say on a building a piece of furniture in your backyard, it's the same thing. It always takes longer than you think it does. You know? Oh yeah, no. Like you said, like I, I talked to, I have multiple musicians who are friends, and they talk about the same thing. It's like once you get to that end point. I mean, of course, there's d- different layers of it that are difficult, but yeah, that just that getting to that finish line is just uh, feels like it takes longer than it than you uh, ever anticipate. But it, it'll come out. We'll get it out once. Yeah, you know, we're let looking. Let me know as soon as you get summer. it. We're yeah, let me know summer. once you do, and we'll definitely get that plugged and let people know about it for sure. Uh, and, and and then again, are you gonna try to tour that? Are you gonna put, you stick around? Yeah, I mean, there's West a couple Coast. of there's a couple of things I do when I go. Like, uh, I think uh, the Philadelphia connection, um, who I've been working with for appearances and stuff. We, mm-hmm. I think we got one um, planned in New Hampshire. Maybe I'll try to play a little music outside of that while I'm there. But uh, yeah, I just no, I I I don't. The road and touring is a, is a young man's game, and I mean, sure, I'd do it, but like, uh, I like the way like. Uh, you know, only like a handful of, of spot and gigs and in the, in the, in the folk world, in the folk world, it's, there's like, there's, there's so many little, like they call them house concerts and there's all these like little tours set up and those kind of things are great. Um, but the, I, uh, I like my life here. Um, and I love, you know, <laughs> like, uh, I like, uh, like I said, I like to write because I like to create the boat, you know, and then let somebody else kind of sail it. That I mean, that's totally cool too because you don't really have to tour anymore with the way social media and everything else works. And yeah. you could just stay on the West Coast and do your thing and still get the word out all the way to New Hampshire without having yeah. to go there. So no, that's perfectly fine. That's a great way to uh, to look at it. So you know, let us know when you get that going. We'll definitely get it plugged and hopefully maybe on at some point you stop in Denver. You know, you got you got already got one extra ticket uh, oh, well, sold at you know. this point for sure. Oh, that's thoughtful, you Carlos. All right. So, yeah, well, uh, friends, fans, thanks for the question. Uh, we got next one. We got a couple more questions left. We got Brand, Brandon Whitman at BWIT at 1989 says, who was the worst hockey player in the cast? Who was the worst hockey player in the cast? That would probably uh, be the famous Mark Marin or Steve Brill. <laughs> uh Mark Marin and Steve Brill. Mark Marin, who has the great podcast, uh, what is it? WTF, right? Yeah, the comedian. Mark with the, yeah, the WTF. Yeah, him and him and Steve Brill were, were roommates at the time when they wrote when he wrote Mighty Ducks with Peter <laughs> with Peter Berg. They were all unemployed and uh, young, and uh, I think they were all in the same one bedroom. But Mark got his SAG card on Mighty Ducks, and um, and I think he was cut out because at, at, at least Steve. Brill had said that you're scaring the ducks. <laughs> you're scaring the children. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I would say Steve. I'm going to make fun of Steve here because uh, even though Steve actually is a pretty good hockey player, I'm just going to say he's the worst because he was in he was in the movie as the as the lawyer in the first one, and he played a couple of small little cameos. I'm just going to say he's the worst because <laughs> I'm not going to throw any of my ducks under the table, man. I mean, like you said, you guys had an actual coach, so I can't imagine <clears throat> you know everyone's got skills to some degree. You can't just uh, throw like you said, throw someone under the bus. So. You yeah, know, yeah. plead the fifth. Yeah. We ducks, understand. Ducks fly together. I'm gonna play yeah. the writer. Hey, no, we'll we'll stand with that. It's ducks fly. <laughs> ducks fly together. You're not throwing anybody under the bus. So, Brandon, we, yeah, we're, we're gonna go with that one uh, for the answer here. So, next one we got uh, Bo- Bobicraft at uh, Bobicraft, and it says, uh, "I had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Doherty during a guest performance he did at my alma mater, Culver Stockton College. Solid oh, yeah. dude. Yeah. My question is." Does he have a lot of things he likes? Uh, does he do a lot of things like college performances or workshops? And if so, what does he enjoy about them? Oh, I think I remember this cat. Yeah, uh, that was a great time. Um, that uh, I have done a few of those. Uh, I've done guest uh, guest artist stuff and some teaching. And um, 
I mean, I got a lot to give away. I mean, people look at me and, you know, I'm 40 and I look 12 and sometimes they're like, you really, you're really 40 years old. And I'm like, and I got 30 years of experience in Hollywood, you know? Um, it's it's a gift and a curse, man. I when yeah. I was seventeen and I wanted to look thirty, they're like, <laughs> exactly, "You look twelve, exactly, dude." I know I could. It didn't. It, I remember being like a teenager, and everybody's like, "Oh, it's gonna be tough on you now." But yep. like, wait till you're older; it's fine. And then, uh, but like, yeah, I guess I got a lot to give away. And um, the older you get, you know, um, and you start to, you know, look at that. It's not just about you. It, uh, it's about um, the thing that meant something to you and you and you give to it i mean i remember uh i had a colleague uh at a playwrights group who said that there's nothing in the theaters about you and and um and i love that because it's like uh it's about uh, this thing that we're all trying to um you know inch forward a little bit whether it's comedy or anything and, and if you can you know turn somebody on and uh to their higher potential i mean come on that's that's why I, what somebody did for me. That's what many, many, many people have done for me. So therefore it's my job to uh, do it for others. You know, well, that's awesome. Like you said, all it just takes is one person just to keep you motivated to keep it going. And then also that, you know, to, to spread a little truth, you know, you know, like I, uh, I mean, I always feel like it, I, I, I would be lying if, if anybody who said they wanted to do this for a living, I'd be like one of my great, great friends who, who's a, a theater director and a film director, or he's actually more of a TV director. And he's a, uh, he would say, it's a great life. We never know if it's a good career or not. And, you know, and there's that part that can you be happy doing this and, uh, um, and uh, telling stories. So, yeah, I mean, that's the thing that I think somebody instilled in me and that's what I try to instill in others. Well, that's awesome, man. Well, like you said, it just, uh, hopefully maybe you get to do some more, get to inspire some more people here in, in, oh, in yeah, the future. Oh yeah. Yeah, That's awesome. Uh, well, moving on, uh, next few questions. We got Drew Zankum at 1HL Podcast says, would Matt allow his kids to be coached by a guy doing community service for DUI, even if it was the great Gordon Bombay? <laughs> hey, man, I'd never judge a book. I'd never <laughs> judge a man until you walk 10 moons in his moccasins. And- I will judge a man who drives in a yeah, huge limo if they, if on they, ice. Onto ice. Yeah, but that was like <laughs> one inch of water in a park. That wasn't really a lake. So, it's true. Uh, uh, I would say that's a great question. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that doesn't. That seems like maybe the coach might want to have another coach there and not just uh, MC Ganey, uh, former um, rock and roll um you know, uh, uh, roadie. Uh, so I would say, um, yeah, that'd be a tough one. That'd be a, that'd be a really tough call. I feel like that'd be a conversation with the wife too. You'd yeah. have to, you'd have to kind of convert. But, uh, at the same time, you know, I mean, that's what that movie's kind of all about, which is, you know, that, you know, not everybody, I mean, everybody makes mistakes in life and then yeah, everybody gets pick, second chances and we pick ourselves up and then, Maybe we learn that uh, if we just do something for other people, you know, all of a sudden our own lives are saved, you know? I think you just so, won the argument with your wife at that point. You just That's how yeah, you approach it. it. And she's like, yeah, you know but, what? You're right. Take them, you, taking a practice. Yeah, but man, do you want to be happy or do you want to be right? You know what I mean? <laughs> that's true. That is a, another wise another wise thing to say as well. So, yeah. no, uh, I, I took, it's I'd a, say that's the best question I've, a, I've ever heard involving Mighty Ducks. <laughs> <laughs> that was like syllogistic. That was like some Aristotle stuff right there. It really was. You had to think it through. So, thanks, Drew, for that one. Next one is my uh, good friend Megan Brueggemann at M. Bruggs. She says, I had a crush on Casey Garvin, a.k.a. the guy that said, what did you do after Banks was taken down? What was Casey like? Casey's a great guy. I remember Casey. Yeah, we, he was a great hockey player too. Uh, well, he was a Minnesota boy, if I remember correctly. Uh, Casey was a Minnesota Minnesota guy, um, and his his mom and his mom and dad were great theater actors at the Guthrie, and I think I think that's who I'm right. I uh, no 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 that was the other guy. That was the other guy. No, Casey Casey was the hockey player. Yeah. It was the other kid from the Hawks. Gosh, I can't remember his name. His mom and dad were great theater actors. This the kid says, was great. I, he did his job. Yeah, exactly, dude. <laughs> but this guy was uh, – um, Casey was a great hockey player, man. I remember – like, and he was really um, – like, we were all stumbling around during hockey camp and not knowing how to do anything, and he was actually really encouraging. And 
uh, and going, you know, getting us to, to, to play together. That's cool. That he, like you guys are like the same age as well. He's kind of teaching you guys how to, how to get into it. Or is he a little bit older? No, he was around the same age, I'd say. Yeah. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah, so, yeah, there you go, Megan, your crush. She was a nice hey, guy. Hey, man, I don't know. Sometimes I don't remember what I had for breakfast, so, you know. You know. Hey, man, that, that, no. sounds, that sounds like it, it works <laughs> with Casey. Sounds like a great guy. You know, he, he, he was uh, concerned about banks, even though the other guy was just doing his job. You know, he, he, he knew he was in the, they were in the wrong, so Casey... Listen, I'm glad it held up off screen. He's a great guy. So there you go, Megan. And the last series of questions we have here is uh, for my good brother-in-law, Tim Chettle. Ta-da! 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 So he's got a few questions here. First one is, do you think the flying V would work in real life? <laughs> no, God, no. <laughs> It'd get crushed like it did not against Iceland, right? I think Iceland, it would right? get crushed exactly the way, like a, like in Iceland. I I would say, uh, I remember going to a game in in Kalamazoo, which was one of where, where I was like like dropping a puck, and it was really cool. And uh, I actually got to announce the second period with this guy, and nice. we, we had a blast doing it. And like, uh, and um. He, he, this guy was so fun. We just had a hoot, and I was trying to get the team before the game to to uh, to practice and do the flying V to test it out on real game time. But the rule was they had to be up by five goals with less than eight minutes left. So. They had a flying V rule. <laughs> yeah, that was the thing. The coach and I, and the announcer, and we were trying to kind of egg it on while we were announcing the game. And this is like AAA, like high level minor league, mm-hmm. like one step away from the NHL, and. Um, and the coach had made a promise that they would they would try to experiment with the the flying V, but they had to have a five goal cushion and eight less than eight minutes to go. So if that puts That's it in context, hilarious. yeah, I can see that. It's like it's like oh, we might throw this this full court basketball shot if we feel like it sometime. Yeah. See if it works. No, it's understandable. The flying V is great in movie form, but may not be in playoff form. Which actually is Lisa's next question: With the Ducks now out of the playoffs, who do you have winning the Stanley Stanley Cup? Oh man, well, and my Blackhawks too. Um, I would say, uh, man, I, those cherry pickers out of Vegas—they look pretty good, <laughs> man. But I actually, the Stanley Cups is an is an entirely different entity, you know. And I know uh, when I was in, I was in Boston, and we went to Fenway Park, and those crazy Bostonites in their hockey. Like I, I, they, I remember like they were playing Toronto, right? I don't know if they won the series. I can't remember because that's way on the other side of the country. But they were like booing this Toronto fan, the entire stadium at Fenway Park, entirely different sport, and they were booing this guy out of the stadium. I can so. I can see it happening. It's <laughs> so, believable. Uh, there's something about them Bruins, and just in terms of the city, but uh, I mean in Nashville. I mean, they're always like they just—they're like the Blackhawks five, six, seven years ago when you know the playoffs are an entirely different entity to them. So, yeah, no, I saw the Bruins uh, come back a few from like mm-hmm. o, o two yesterday. So I was like, all right, well, I think they mean business here. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a it's a but tough I'm, one. I don't want to admit it, but I'm, those Vegas boys look pretty good. Yeah, no, I think you're. I think you're right Cherry too. Cherry so. man. <laughs> hey, they're, they're, they put him in Vegas for a reason, I guess. So, uh, and a couple last two questions he has was: uh, Do you still play hockey outside of the movies? Uh, I skate more than I play hockey. Um, and threatening to join a men's league, and a buddy of mine actually <laughs> coaches some kids, and I uh, I was uh, wanting to kind of get over there and, and help him, and then um, we were talking about ways to give back this year with the the actual the Anaheim franchise and they have a lot of they do a lot of you know community outreach and they have their own league and all that and I was kind of wanting to kind of surprise and jump in on some of that this year with the anniversary but mostly awesome. I just mostly I just skate and and then um my my equipment all stinks it's, it's you know it's so nasty smelling man I don't know if I want to get, <laughs> get that stuff out anymore <laughs> You never know. It's a, it's it maybe a good hose down. Yeah, I'm 40, help. man. I'm not sure. I gotta I gotta see how I do out there. You know, good hose. I mean, honestly, you know, like you said, getting getting back into things. Like, did you hear about or see the Cobra Kai, the Karate Kid remake they did, like a rehash reboot? 
Oh, on I YouTube heard about Red. that. I heard about that. Yeah. Yeah. They just, uh, I was watching the episodes this weekend, man, like they did it right. So I'm telling you this possible, there's definitely potential. So oh, hopefully I, love we get playing, to- man. I love playing hockey. So I don't give me Yeah. Wrong. So yeah, hopefully there's something there. And his last question was, what was the better team? Mighty Ducks one D two or D three. Uh, Hmm. That's a really good question, man. Uh, I would you guys say all out, you, you overcame something in each movie. But. I would say D two because uh, of, of Kenny Wu, right? Uh, yeah, because of Kenny Wu <laughs> and uh, and the the Oreo line <clears throat> and uh, and the the fact that the knuckle puck was new. And so you know how like a uh, you know in, in baseball they catch on to your metrics after time. Like the knuckle puck was new, so well, over time you know you can learn to to. to combat the knuckle puck from uh, from Russ but I'd say I'm gonna say the D2 team uh, uh, world champions would be the best I think so I think you're right and yes my garage door is it still has marks from me uh, trying to perfect the knuckle puck oh yeah after watching D2 so yeah no it's uh that's a great that's a great answer uh, Tim thanks Never! for the awesome questions everybody thanks for those awesome questions last thing that we have here Matt that I want to do it's a little podcast game we like to do with our celebrity guest called Did I Say That? It's kind of like the Family Matters uh, Steve Urkel, Did I Do That? And basically it's a game where we test your knowledge on the movie lines that you said in the movie. So we're going to be testing your knowledge on the Mighty Ducks franchise. So I know I didn't say woo 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 Kenny woo. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. I'm, I'm going to throw you for a couple of these, so we'll see. I'm going to list three quotes from each individual movie. And you're going to select which one is yours after I list those ones. So the listeners are going to be playing along. Are you ready, Matt? I am. I was born All right. ready. All right, let's do this. So we're going to start off with the first Mighty Ducks. I'm going to list off the three quotes. So here we go. First one, just so you know, we really suck. Second quote, keep swinging. Maybe you'll give them a cold. Third quote, you said we were losers. You said we didn't deserve to live. So which one was yours? Oh, come on. That's an easy one. Just so you know, we really suck. Hey, I had to throw you a softball for you first. Yeah, I had yeah. to give you the, the... It's like they say, it's the first pitch you want to hit. You yeah, know? yeah. I got to get the... It's not the knuckle puck right off the bat. So we're going to we'll work into it. So now we're moving on to D2, the Mighty Ducks. First quote, I thought I, I thought Iceland was covered with ice. Second, second quote, they're bigger. They're stronger. They're faster. They've got more facial hair. Third one, you lost it for yourself. Which well, one is yours? Well, the third one would be Peter. Uh, the second one is me. And the first one, I'm not sure who. Well, Iceland's cover. I think that's Connie. That was Emilio when he was on the date with the uh, Iceland coach. You're right. You're he was right. betraying the team yeah, you're right. at this point in time. He was having ice cream with the enemy. Yeah, totally. With the enemy, yeah. yeah. So uh, the, the, uh, just not going, not going down well, Gordon. Yeah. But uh, yes. Thank you for that one. You did. You correctly listed all three points as well. So now, round three, final round, D3, the Mighty Ducks. Here we go. First quote, they're cheap shotting us to death. Second quote, I got to tell her to stop using horse turds in the recipe. Third quote, to win Coach Orion, sir. Which one was yours? Uh, the third one. I remember I actually stood up straight and pretended like I was a soldier. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Good old, good old Aaron yeah, sucking I, up, I, I as always. I would actually close my eyes and, and actually just listen for where the most sarcasm was, and that would be, <laughs> that would be the... You, you, you know how you go to the it. beach with that metal detector, and you know, gong, 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 you know, you just kind of, there's got to be one for sarcasm, and that's when usually you find the line. And that's where your meter was, right, when you quoted that line. Mm-hmm. So, yes, congratulations. You remembered all your lines. So you would fit flawlessly in any Mighty Ducks reboot of any sort. So, uh, well, Matt, that was everything that I wanted to go over. So I appreciate you, you know, again, taking the time, playing along here, answering all these awesome questions. So I have one question for you, Carlos. Yeah, yeah. So for the Be Kind and Rewind podcast with the VHS tape, do you take the little tab off the side so you can re-record on the v- v- uh, VHS tape or no? 
Of course, but you don't record <laughs> over. You just gotta edit and make sure you don't. That's you do. that's a reference that any millennial will not understand. Uh, you, Putting you, a piece of scotch tape over the side of the VHS. Yeah, and you gotta, and, and it, it depends on how heavy you know how many movies you have on the VHS by how heavy yeah. it is too. Yeah, You're exactly. like, oh, this has got this has got six movies. This has got maybe about two. Or every, yeah. or that one VHS tape that has like it's been peeled off so many times the label, and now it just says reruns on oh, it. Oh yeah, dad, dad's like scratched out your second birthday and like recorded a football game you're like thanks dad Mm -hmm. appreciate it yeah so we we know all about the vhs days like i said for the b kind of rewind podcast okay that's my only question no no that was a great question we and i I definitely uh feel feel your pain on that so again matt i can't thank you enough let everybody know uh where they can find you online so they can follow you and find out you know about your next project and well my instagram my instagram is uh at archie doman uh, a R C H I E D O H M A N A R C H I E D O H M A N. I'm a uh, periodic Instagrammer, but I tend to do things on there and smite batches and then I'll disappear. But that's usually where I uh, yep. try to do some stuff. I'm not a big Twitter guy. I, I think that stuff's destroying our world, but I do uh, do. I, you know, it's it's back and forth <laughs> for me too. I was like, ah, you know, I like doing more stuff on Instagram. Twitter's more like. Uh, it streamlines things, but yes, I can, I can definitely uh, see where you're coming from on that. But we'll definitely get them listed in the description so people can follow you. Also, we'll get links to where uh, they can follow you for uh, upcoming release of the album and everything like that as well. So keep us uh, updated on that stuff, and we'll definitely get it posted as well. Sounds good, Carlos. Thanks for uh, keeping it real and uh, and keeping the light on there for us. Yeah, man. No, anytime. Appreciate you as well. And thanks, everyone else, for tuning into this episode of the Be Kind and Rewind podcast. Make sure you tune in every Throwback Thursdays for uh, new episodes of the podcast. Subscribe, like, follow, and rate the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Spreaker, YouTube, and Poop Culture Podcast Network at poopculture.com. Also, follow the podcast on social media on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Be Kind Rewind Pod for all of your nostalgic needs. So thanks and be excellent to each other. Say that fast like 10 times in a row. It's so hard. (laughs) (laughs) So hard. I'm lucky to get it out once. (laughs) What you just heard was a podcast in the Poop Culture Extended Universe. For more great podcasts, make your way to www.poopculture.com.